Welcome to this week's Quick Charge. God instructed the priests when they were carrying the ark across the Jordan River, when you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, there, take your stand. Standing on the edge, as it were, requires faith in God because it's on the edge where we find ourselves expectantly waiting for the fulfillment of his word to us. So what are some of the strategic places where I must stand? Well, one of them is on the wall because everyone in the kingdom of God, everyone in the body of Christ has their place on the wall. It's where we live, it's where we serve, it's where we function. It is our place in the kingdom. And because we're on the wall, we're vulnerable to whatever's being aimed at us and thrown at us and directed at us from below. It's not uncommon to encounter offense and hurt and doubt and disappointment and fear, feelings of futility, worry, anger, defeat, uncertainty, and even the threat of impossibility. But the question remains, will I allow room for that? Will I give in to it? Will I leave my place on the wall? Nehemiah, the great builder, said, as he stood on the wall, I will not leave my place on this wall. I will not entertain it. I will not step into that snare. I will stand in spite of it, and I will stand over it, and I will stand above it. Another place where we must take our stand is in the dark. That's when I don't have an answer. I don't see and I don't understand because I'm in the dark. You know, we must all face and answer this challenge at some point. Will we stand in the dark? Can we work? Can we walk and trust and worship? Can we pray? Can we thank God and obey in the dark? Nehemiah's very first assignment as a follower of God, as a builder, as a servant, and as a leader was conducted completely in the dark. Abraham obeyed God and he ended up temporarily in the dark. The birds were circling to steal his portion, to steal his lot. They were circling because there was no movement. Things had come to a standstill. Abraham was waiting for God who seemed late and even overdue. In Ephesians 6, Paul says, even when you have fought to a standstill, you must still stand your ground. When we can't see the remedy, the resolution, or the solution, when we can't see the end, we stand. And one final place where we must stand is in the gap. You could call it the meantime because that's what it really is. All of us face mean times. Those are the intervening time in the middle, in the gap. You know, it's amazing how God put this world together out of nothing in six short days. And yet it takes him seemingly forever, for us weeks, months, years, to fulfill a word or a promise to us. It's not very encouraging as well to realize that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years. So what's a few months or a few years? God seems to love time. He seems to love using time, taking time, spending time, and most of all, redeeming time. It means that part of our calling as one of the followers of God and his people is that we wait. And we're not alone because Noah waited, Abraham waited, Isaac and Jacob both waited for God. Joseph waited, Moses, David, Jesus, and Paul. They all waited. So it's just part of what we do. So if you're on the edge, you're likely on the wall, or you're in the dark, or you're in that gap. But if you are, know this, 
God will finish what he has started for your good and his glory. I'll see you next week for another quick charge. God bless.